All right, guys. Uh, I just got done with a pretty long gaming session. I thought I was about to get off, make a really quick dinner, and go to bed. And the March update, you know, the weekly update thing is here. Bunch of notes about the Guardian, you know, nerfs and abyss nerfs. All that kind of stuff. Let's get into it. Thank you very much to my Patreon people. All right, guys. A weekly update, March 3rd. Scroll down in here. Heroes of Arcasia. Downtime for this week's update. Basically telling us when it's like right now while I'm recording this. Balance updates. Before we dive into specific changes and updates, we wanted to share our reasoning for adjusting the balance for some of the Tier 1 and Tier 2 Guardians. This is pretty long. They essentially just go through and kind of tell you how like in the other regions of the game, they didn't have tier two and tier three at start. So they had to sit in these tiers for a while. They had a long time to practice and learn these mechanics. And this was their difficult content. For us, this is not intended to be our difficult content. It's essentially considered a super long prologue. They literally say that here in this statement to the tier three content. And at the bottom here, they talk about even Argos arriving this month will be an unforgiving opponent ready to test the metal of the so-called heroes infesting Arcasia. So, you know, they're basically, it sounds like they're not, uh, hopefully, right? They're not going to be reducing the tier three difficulty. They really explain it here. I will link this and you can kind of see that. You know, they really want it to just kind of be a progression of difficulty up to that, not us having to deal with it and it be slower and challenging because they literally want us to get through to tier three quickly and look at tier one and tier two like a prologue as far as those challenging fights go, right? There's still all that other side content that's full of skill points and runes and everything that you still want to get. Now we're going to get into specifics on what these changes were. So for Necromancer's Origin, improved player forgiveness during the orb phase when trying to defeat Sigma during stage two of Necromancer's Origin, improved the visual effect of Sigma's color wave to make it more clear to players. That is actually a really nice change. I know those mechanics and like I always kind of st struggled every time I'd be in comms like, hey, what color was it? Phantom Palace, Hall of the Twisted Warlord, made a change to Phantom Legion King attack pattern and Phantom Cut debuff stack that is applied to the character. Updated the Phantom Legion King Illusion Sword Summon attack pattern. As the sword follows players, if a player receives two stacks, they will incur damage. Upon receiving three stacks, they will die. Hildebrandt Palace decreased the amount of damage required for the stagger phase when Afernia appears in stage 3. Increased the phantom energy effect range from meteor mechanic during stage 3. Changed the attack shape of the second meteor mechanic from a circle to a front attack during stage 3. That obviously makes it much easier to avoid and still be able to DPS from the back. Gate of Paradise, Sea of Indolence, increased the warning time for the Omen attack in Stage 2, changed Indolence Sentinel Akam's attack from a wipe mechanic to a high damage attack in Stage 2. So oh, they got rid of a wipe mechanic. Guardian Raids, Virtus, removed the stun debuff that was applied when players were hit by the Tail Swing attack. Interesting. So the tail swing will now just be damaged with no stun. That is probably pretty huge. I think that's one of the things that people had trouble reading and probably got hit by a lot. Decreased the damage dealt by several attacks. Jumping out of the ice. I don't really get why. This one I feel like was really easy to avoid. It surprised me and killed me my first time I ever did him going in blind. But, you know, then I avoided it every other time after that. Grabbing a player and breathing ice fire. Yeah, that was usually basically a one shot unless you are seriously overkilled. Nacrasina decreased the damage dealt by several attacks. Tail attack after jumping, after thumping the ground with tail, jumping out of the ground. Lightning projectiles. Flame Fox Yoho gets reduced the duration of his flame ground attack. That's probably nice. Those flame things stick around forever. And if you're soloing it, you end up having to feel like you just got to move the boss somewhere. Decreased Flame Fox Yoho's HP. Reduced the effect of the Burning Soul ability. Decreased the damage dealt by several attacks. Throwing Fox Fires, Jump Forward and Claw Attacks, Jump Upward and Claw Attacks. Tatalos, everybody's favorite. The timing on that has to be so good. 
decrease the duration of Tatalos circle of spalling rock attack, change Tatalos attack that collects sand energy and explodes from a wipe mechanic to a high damage attack. That means you can now over gear it and do this super easy because there's no more wipe mechanic. He is one that if you don't do the mechanic properly, it doesn't really matter how over geared you are. You'll still get wiped. I guess you get so over geared you can one shot him probably with your awakening. Decreased the damage dealt by Tatalos Earth Explosion attacks. Achate is modified guardian. Achate summons statue pattern to always summon four guardian statues. Interesting. Okay, that's nice. Sometimes, dude, like several times I'd only get like one, right? And we were like, we're not getting enough to actually fully break the shield. Are we doing something wrong? Or is so is it like it was RNG before? How many you're supposed to get? Now it'll always be four. That's really nice. Decrease the damage required to apply weak point to Achates. To keep Achates challenging in trial guardian raids, the encounter will not have these changes. All right, very nice, because that is supposed to be a more challenging thing, not just material progressions through the tier. Lava Chromanium. Decrease the damage dealt by the lava eruption attack used by Lava Chromanium when becoming Berserk. Honestly, I didn't think he needed any changes. I went and went to him totally blind, only like 20 or 30 gear score over and soloed him first shot, like absolutely no problem. Uh, he's a, pr all the turtle ones are very easy in my opinion. All the ones I've done so far. Levanos, decrease the damage required to apply weak point. That is pretty nice. Uh, so weak point is the destruction, right? So Levanos has like a special shell on him essentially. Uh, each phase of the fight, like if he teleports away, right, it's back again. And he takes incredibly reduced damage until you break it. And, uh, you know, the Zerker has pretty decent weak point. And uh, I felt I found myself, in order to get off quick, to be able to DPS decently, right, that I had to use my weak point attacks and also a destruction bomb. But I believe that's probably intended. They probably want you to use those. Here they explain to you the weak point mechanic, right, is the destruction breaking things on uh, these bosses. Alberhastic reduced Alberhastic's beneficial effect that was granted when obtaining the heat orb, changed the wipe mechanic to a high damage attack. So another removal of the wipe mechanic. Uh, and then we've just got general updates and bug fixes. It is pretty general. I didn't see anything too super crazy. I want to make sure to point out to everybody here. I will link this if you want to go through these minor little details as well. They're also here blown up nice and big if you like to pause and read them. All right, well, there you go, guys. Honestly, my opinion, like thinking about it, you know, after reading and like their whole explanation of why and also listening to some of the stuff like Zeal's Ambition had a nice thing like when they first announced these nerfs kind of explaining stuff. And I, I really kind of understand it now. And I think it makes a lot of sense grouping up and stuff with, with all your people, right, is a challenge because we're all spread out. And, you know, it sounds like essentially they're looking at, you know, this tier one and tier two. They literally said like a prologue to tier three and they want us in there. So hopefully that's when we're all going to be able to group up. And, you know, you really should be able to because you can still even over gear inside a tier three and do the lower tier three content with your friends. And you'll still actually get those abyss rewards versus if you're in tier three gear and you run back, you know, and you do the tier two ones with your friends, you don't get any rewards. So you're less likely to want to do that unless you're just an extra. I love playing with my friends guy, right? Whereas this other way, you'll still you get some gold, you help out your buddy. And then, you know, hopefully we'll all just be able to do these raids. Hopefully some of this harder stuff, right, will bring out more, right? Because it's going to be hard and challenging. Maybe that's what will bring more of those bonds when we get there. Maybe Tier 3 will be the blessing. I played on RU a bit. I got to Tier 3, but I played alone, right? So I definitely haven't done any of the difficult Tier 3 raids yet myself. Thank you very much to the Patreon people. I hope you guys appreciate the content. Maybe hit me a like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time.